Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Michi Makes Up. Today we're gonna sit down and look at the newly launched Viseart Aton Dew palettes. Uh, two of them were released at the same time. We have Kashmiri and Bijouette. These are stunning, stunning palettes, and I just, I just have so much that I want to do with them, that I wanted to say about them. So I will dedicate a separate video for Kashmiri because I'll just show you guys. This is a kind of cool tone fall um, color story, and it just has like some shades have just a bit more warmth than the others to give you that really nice contrast. So when you create looks, it gives you, it easily can give you depth. And this color story, this palette really reminds me of the Dior, um, new Dior Backstage Limited Edition eye palettes. So this is Plum Neutrals. You saw me talk about these in um, my Sephora recommendations video. And I really think this is a combo or a mashup of the two kind of limited edition backstage eye palettes. So I'm really interested in, you know, swatching all these shades for you, create a look and also do comparisons um, against these two palettes and possibly some other ones in my collection. Therefore, today we are focusing on Bijouette. This is... I love, I love this palette. It's still very autumn um, and even winter, you know, depending on what you're trying to do, but it definitely gives you a very much autumn vibe. And I just love the graphic art on these Etendu palettes. This is the inspiration behind, like this color with the gold accent is the inspiration behind um, one of the rooms in my house. Uh, it's basically like an entertainment room that has like a full bar. Uh, we recently redid the floors, painted one of the accents wall uh, a teal color, and then the furnishing has these gold accents um, in them. It's not done. Uh, I love to show you guys a photo, but it's not done. Uh, but it definitely has this vibe. Like if this was a wallpaper in that room, it would be perfect. So uh, yes, very lovely palette, not just for the graphic design, but also these beautiful, beautiful shades. Um, also watch this palette. We'll talk about the uh, description on the website. Um, as you guys know, Viseart has really, you know, very descriptive information of all of their palettes and then also down to the individual shades how you can use them so i will also create a look with this palette we'll do some comparison with other colorful palettes in my collection the one that comes to mind immediately is going to be uh, natasha denona's circle loco i think you can see the similarities here between the two um, and we also have um from Byredo, the Prism palette, or the Prismic palette, that is also very colorful. Not quite this. This is so much warmer than, than that palette, uh, but we'll take it out and, and look at it together. So uh, before I move on to the swatches, uh, just a quick overview of the palette description. Introducing Bijouet Etendu. Enter a world of untold riches and opulent splendor this season with our newest and most sumptuous Etendu yet, Bijouet. It is inspired by the now archived Pro Palette Bijou Royale. Our new Bijouet Etendu is a treasure trove of Baroque baubles. The iridescent and duochromatic shimmers can be diffused into a soft candlelight glow and buff into the lash line as a liner or use a damp brush for a more striking pigmented finish. Our proprietary formula of shimmers, metallics, satins, and mattes are comfortable to wear, effortless to apply, and highly pigmented, giving you sensational, controllable color payoff. These shadows are designed to give you full control. Bijouet Etendu brings the carefree sensuousness of the 20s with our delightful, playful, and effortlessly chic treasure chest of the richest jewel tones to shake your tail feather in. So uh, this really reminds me of, well, this is I think exactly like the Roaring Twenties, Art Deco style. Like I just, I just love it. I love the idea of it, the aesthetic of it. Um, yeah, so let's get onto the swatches because I can seemingly go on and on <laughs> about, um, why I like this palette, just talking about it, but let's just do some demonstrations here with these swatches. 
And I already posted all my swatches of these palettes on Instagram when I first got them. So if you're not following me on Instagram and you wanna see this information like firsthand or much sooner, um, definitely you can do that. Uh, my handle is below, it's basically Michi Makes Up. And I want to go back in to this orange shade to do another application because while the swatch didn't turn out all that great, it's these are easy to work with. I've never had issues with their mattes, um, metallics, you know, any shimmer shade. It all just blends really beautifully together. So I felt like it didn't do it justice. So that's why I went back in with um, one more application. This shade here is a base or a mid-tone beige taupe hue with a matte finish. This red shade here is a warm wine tone with a matte finish. The orange is a demi-matte mid-tone pumpkin orange with flecks of reflectivity. And then this here is a teal metallic dual chrome. And you can, uh, as described here, use the metallic teal as a stunning all-over lid color or for a wash of color on all skin tones. Layer this too with your favorite matte or shimmer shadows. Can be foiled with a mixing medium or used as a liner with a damp brush. Great for all skin tones. The next four shades. This here is Burnt Dark Chocolate with a matte finish. Then we have a Antiqued Gold with a Demi Dual Chrome Metallic Finish. Followed by Warm Toffee Midtone with a matte finish. And then a Midtone Gold Amber with a metallic finish. I'm going to go back into the green once again, just for two applications. This is Raspberry with a metallic finish, Sapphire Blue with a demi chromatic metallic finish, Majestic Green with a metallic finish, and this is a mid-tone purple with a demi chromatic metallic finish. I would say this green here is not as buttery and easy to swatch um, as the rest of the shades. This last row here particularly, these are all your metallic kind of jewel tones, uh, but this one here, as you guys saw, it doesn't seem to transfer as easily. So for today's look, I definitely want to dig into this um, pumpkin orange shade, as well as one of the two purples. Um, I wonder if we're gonna create two looks here. Maybe we should do that just for, you know, just to see, maximize our time trying out this palette. Um, you might notice as I'm doing my eye makeup, and maybe you saw this already, but there's some redness right here on my lid, and this is an allergic reaction that happened like almost a week ago, but it looks like it hasn't fully healed or dissipated, which is why I didn't film um, or I didn't release anything earlier this week. So if you notice that, that's the reason why. I just wanted to give some clarity here. I'm starting with this beige shade and I'm placing that on the crease. Then taking the burnt chocolate shade, I am placing that onto the outer corners. Next, going into this antique gold, I'm adding that right here and diffusing towards the center of the lid. And then we're going into this mid-tone gold. I'm placing this towards the inner corner. I'm gonna go back to that antique gold to add a bit more of this. And I'd like to deepen the outer corners a bit more. Now I'm ready to diffuse the shade into the crease. And 
And just for fun, I'm going to place this green shade on um, the upper lash line to see how well it plays with these really warm golden brown shades. I think I like that. It didn't muddy anything up here, which is really important because you know sometimes at any moment, like the wrong choices, it just turns into this mess. Um, but it's still interesting. And when I blink, you can see, you know, this green here, which is unexpected. I'm gonna go a step further and actually wet this brush here um, because I want that effect to be amplified for the screen shade. Moving on to the left eye, I'm placing this orange all over the lids. Next, I'm going into this purple here. And I'm first placing it in the outer corner and then also towards the inner corner. And I'm blending it upwards from the inner corner. Taking this red shade here, I'm adding that as a upper lash line liner. And then I'm putting some of that on the lower lash line, that same red shade. Going into this gold here, I'm placing that into the inner corners. Or I should say just one corner, not both. Then I'm going to this orange again and mixing it with a bit of this purple. And I'm placing that right along here because I want to blur the transition between the purple shade and this orange. And just now I've gone back into the orange and place that on top. And then next I'm actually going to bring the shade to line under the eyes, kind of smoke it out. And then for the other side, I think we can play around with the green a little bit more. I'm actually going to add that on the lower lash line as well. So we're going to go back to this green. For blush, I'm taking Suku. I'm going to go into this shade here. And for highlight, I'm going to use the shade here, which is the peachy one. I actually have some lipstick on my lips already, which is the Victoria Beckham Posh Lipstick in the shade Spice. But I will take this off and put on a different lipstick. I'm choosing the Suku Sheer Matte Lipstick in the shade 103. This is a coffee shade and it's, it's just gorgeous. I love it. I love all their sheer matte lipsticks. So this is the finished look and the lip definitely goes more with this more dramatic eye look on the left eye uh, than the right side. I think the right side is much more playful in comparison. Um, the purple looks more concentrated on camera than it does in the vanity mirror. And it's kind of bothering me because the little bumps that I have on this side is just catching on to more product. It doesn't look smooth. So off camera, I did a bit more blending and I did go in with a Q-tip to just kind of smooth things out here because it was getting too, you know, it started looking messy. But I'm quite happy with how um, you see the pop of orange right here and then it's, pretty blended into the purple. So this would be a look um, I actually would wear out in the evening. Um, I wear something not quite like this, but I played around with similar shades, the orange, red, and purple um, for Halloween. And I thought it was, it was great. I thought it was just 
perfect. It's not, you know, I wasn't in a costume, but it kind of still had the Halloween spirit. And the red liner that I use is just not very visible. It's kind of disappeared. Um, into the other shades. So I definitely did something different um, with today's look than the other day where I did use a red liner and it did it did turn out beautifully. Um, but no fault to the product at all because these mattes, they are easy to diffuse, to apply, and uh, they don't skip. With your favorite brush, you're not gonna have any issues skipping with any of these products, anything with diffusing. Uh, we did put one of the metallics to the test this green here to see if I wet my brush, like what kind of um, amplified effect we're gonna get. And while it wasn't like, boom, like this is totally transformed into this molten metallic shade, I did get much more pigment and you can see the green very noticeably. It was also very easy for me to go back with the brush and kind of wing this out here. So really fun look on this side and this green, I, I really, really like. Um, let me show you actually, I wanna go back and wet the brush again because we knew that this green, or we know from earlier, this green wasn't gonna be as um, concentrated, pigmented in its color payoff. But let me go to like this purple here or this blue. Wet the brush again and I'm going into the blue. So you can see it is more concentrated. And if you plan to use it as a liner, you definitely get that uh, effect that you would get as if it was like a metallic crayon. So for comparisons, uh, I know that I took out some colorful palettes to show you or the Natasha Denona Circle Loco, but this look up here reminds me of uh, by Rado's Disco palette. So I'm gonna take that out and let's compare uh, two shades from that palette against this one. You guys know Disco is one of my favorite palettes. And when I put it up next to, you can see the similarities. Let me swatch specifically these two shades. These two, much warmer than their Bijouette uh, counterparts. And the texture is actually quite different. Um, these metallics are brighter, whereas these are kind of subdued. They're creamy and they have a bit of a sparkle to them, but these are definitely brighter and more glittery in comparison. And then comparing the Natasha Denona palette next to Viseart, Natasha Denona's is, overall the color story is cooler, but I think the two shades, without a doubt is going to be the purple and the blue. So the purple is Razzle Dazzle, the blue is Electric. The blue are dupes of each other. Barely noticeable their difference. And then Razzle Dazzle is a fuchsia and it's not so much a purple or plum shade. And it's also much more glittery than the comparison shade. Uh, I do want to go into flip here, this teal. It's also metallic because I think I think it'll be lighter and brighter than this shade here, but let's take a look. This is flip. Flip looks like it has a bit more blue than green. And this is a deeper shade. So we knew that this was going to be a little bit lighter, but this looks like it has more depth and it is a deeper shade. And when looking at the Prismic palette, um, side by side here, I really think there aren't too many similarities. Um, they are similar in that they're colorful, both of these are colorful palettes. But this here is, it's very spring, summer. Um, all the shades kind of have this lightness to it. Um, even the deeper shades here, um, to give you know this palette some contrast, it, it really, it really doesn't remind me. Like the way that I use this palette is much more experimental than I would um, with Viseart because I think there's a lot more 
anchoring shades to give you like some base that you can build the now layer on the metallic with the fun looks off of. This here is just all like whatever you want it to be. You can play around and, and just create all kinds of interesting looks with shades that seemingly won't go together, but that's kind of the idea of it. Um, so I don't think there's anything similar here because the reds are different finishes. Um, the lightness or the depth of the shade is also quite a bit different. Yeah, just totally different vibe. So I wanted to show you, but we're not gonna do swatch comparisons. And then from Pat McGrath, Celestial Divinity, this is the Mothership Mega that was released last year. There might be some similarities with this shade, Violet Void. So I'll swatch that. Because I have room, I'm going to swatch it right underneath Viseart's. Let me go back for one more application. The texture is different. The finish is also slightly different. This is much creamier metallic. This is more of a, it's not a lid topper, but it does feel kind of light and it's a bit more glittery than the Viseart, but they both have the same idea, that kind of deep purple with the shift to almost black. And then when you look at it, it kind of has these silver, pink um, glitter to it that gives it a very interesting depth and more shift. Um, I would say this is, you know, the lighter texture of the two, feels much more um, powdery, whereas this is a creamy metallic. That concludes the comparisons and I do love this palette. It is a fall warm tone palette with fun jewel tones and the whole theme of the Roaring Twenties Art Deco style theme is just, I'm all over this. I'm just all over this. And I've used this a couple of times and every time, um, you know, I feel like, oh, because there's these fun shades, like, let me try to do something I normally don't do. And I usually like the results. It just encourages creativity uh, and, and, I, and I love that about the palette. Let me know below what you think of this palette, if you have it or you've seen it and you've been curious about it. I know a number of you um, started watching this channel when I did the Petite Fool review and so exciting. There are, uh, there's a new set of Pootsie Fool that was just launched today during the time of filming. So I will be reviewing those as well. Look forward to it. See you guys very soon in the next one. And there will be a dedicated video once again for Kashmiri. Kashmiri is just the opposite in terms of tones and color story. Kashmiri is much more neutral and cool tone, but it's just still beautiful like the looks everything is just still a stunning palette um of itself so i look forward to talking to you guys more about that take care see you soon bye